All right, in today's video, I'm going to go over installing all the power uh, for this uh, 83 Montauk restoration. Um, got two batteries, house battery and a starter battery, and I'm doing some unique things, um, which I'll explain in a few minutes. But anyway, here is a view of the final product. I've got the <clears throat> NOCO charger. Um, I've actually got a through, uh, through connector, a battery isolator. Of course we've got our two batteries here which is the uh, starter and the house battery uh, battery switch and a few loose cables which is a normal I ain't finished cabling up everything and for house power we've got a 30 amp circuit breaker so there it is uh, let me go ahead and get started but before we do that go ahead and hit the button right here and subscribe and um, let's get going all right because there's so much footage, I'm going to do this video a little bit differently than what I've done in the past. I'm going to introduce each section, explain what I'm doing, and then show some shots from the actual doing of it, if you will, and then go on to the next section. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing we had to do, obviously, was get the cable pulled. Now, originally I had pulled everything back to the engine and found out that the control cables I was using were a little short. So my plan was to originally do the um, rigging first. But we're going to go with the power cable this time because i'm waiting on the uh, control cables to come in so in this case we're actually pulling the power cables back and we're using two gauge cable and because of the length um i decided to go with two gauge it's a little bit more expensive but i shouldn't have any problems in terms of getting the battery power from the console back to the engine all right so we've got a bundle of everything we want to run it's laid out in front of the boat um, and I'm just gonna get it down into the tunnel and start pushing it back. Now I'm working in front of the console because I can access the tunnel a lot easier from here than I can from from the uh, inside of the console. All right, is there? Yep. Honestly, I don't know if I'm be able to get that grommet on there. Might be too All right, now it's time for the ground cable. This is coming from the engine, and uh, we got to route it underneath the floor, and then up through this access cable. And we need to make sure this is not in the way because get this out. We're just going to run it up here. When we rig the engine, the final rig, and this will be part of that, go to the battery right there. So I'm going to cut it. Strip it. Double crimp. Now, I've got some wire guides. Just for the power cables. All right, that's the ground. That's for the actual engine. That goes right to the engine. Well, it actually goes to everything else as well.
Now the next piece that we're doing here is going to be installing the battery switch. Um, I like having both of them. Here's a diagram and an explanation that kind of explains why I'm having a battery isolator and a switch. So the way this whole system works is we're going to have a battery switch, we're going to have the isolator, um, also called the relay. Now um, we've got everything connected to the secondary or the house battery as well as the start. When the outboard is running, what's going to happen is, of course, it's going to charge the starter battery. Um, the isolator is going to sense it and it's going to give priority to the starter battery, but at whatever point the voltage from the secondary house battery is lower than the voltage from the start battery, it's going to allow the house battery to charge. Likewise, when we have this on the trailer and we have it hooked up to the uh, NOCO charger, it's going to prioritize the start battery. If the start battery has a lower voltage uh, than the house battery, it's going to give that priority, charge it. Once the start battery voltage is higher than the lower, it'll charge the, the house battery. So to me this is just a way to be able to keep both batteries uh, charged as much as possible whether I'm running the boat or whether I have it on the trailer uh, with a uh, house current connected to it. And um, the switch is obviously there in case if I need to ever start um, on the on the house battery I can switch it over to number two put it on the house battery and start the engine and get, get on with my day. Um, however that should never happen uh, ideally but you never know. So at least we have the capability to do that should we ever need it. So the sequence on wiring in this switch uh, was probably about two hours worth of uh, film. Camera's getting kicked over. Uh, it, it was a little bit of a mess considering especially that we were working in a really confined space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you an overview of what we did. And the first thing was we wired in this uh, connector uh, to the engine. So output of the switch is going to this. Uh, the next thing we did was we wired the two battery connectors. Um, I marked this one for a piece of black tape so I knew which one was connected to one, which would be the primary uh, starter battery. And then, uh, of course, the other one was uh, connected to uh, post number two. And then those two are connected to the batteries like so. So, yeah, this is just an abbreviated version of the wiring we did. I used the standard crimp and uh, shrink connectors. Uh, one of the things um, I try to do with the shrink connectors is I apply heat until, uh, until I get some glue coming out of it, just to make sure that I got a good seal. So there it is, uh, the <laughs> short segment. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, action, if any, that I'm gonna show here because it's just hours and hours of, uh, literally probably two hours worth of uh, filming uh, to show how I wired in that switch. And uh, yeah, I did put it in the door afterwards. You can see the uh, wooden edge here. Now what I'm gonna be doing here is wiring up the isolator. It has been pre-wired up to a certain extent, but I need to run it to the batteries themselves. So one side goes to the um, starter battery, the other one to the house. Uh, I'm using this crimper um, that you'll see here in the sequence. I'm actually gonna post links to it. It's uh, rarely used, but when I do use it, and I am glad that I have it because it'll handle some pretty heavy gauge cable. All right, so I'm gonna be using one of these um, battery relays. Now I've pre-terminated these and the one with the red mark on it, that is actually the charging battery. So that's the one that gets priority. Uh, it's got a black ground. All that does is provide a ground for the electronics to work. And I've marked the starting battery with some red tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this. And I then this is actually a loop and I did that because I used every last bit of it. And um, I'll just cut it to length as I put this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this and then uh, cut these to length and terminate the cables. All right, so I've got it mounted and what I'm doing is I've measured um, how much I need to each battery and I measure this twice. This is really just by feel and by looks. And um, so we're gonna cut it there. Once I know I've got enough. By the way, these heavy gauge cutters are really handy. I put links to all this stuff in the uh, in the description. So let's see. Uh, 
Let me get. These are uh, copper coated, I believe. Wire is tinned, so that uh, individually stranded and tinned, so it's marine grade. And I've got my big mega crimper, which we'll be using this on the battery wires, and it's set for the right gauge. This is almost really a three-handed operation. You mean, um... I got it. As long as I don't squeeze my finger. Or crimp my finger. Alright, perfect. All right, we're at the final countdown now. Uh, the inside of the console, battery, switch, or everything's wired up in there. Last thing we need to do is wire up this uh, this engine. Um, again, I've got the two gauge cable coming in, and um, I'm going to show you exactly where this is going to go. All right, so here's a manufacturer's diagram as to where the wiring goes. So the negative goes to that bolt down there. Um, positive goes directly to the starter. Now. I actually um, put my negative to this bolt. It's just easier to get to it. It gave me a maintenance loop too in case I should ever need it. So that's, uh, that's it and it should work. As long as you're grounded to the engine, you should be fine. All right, in this segment, I'm gonna compress 10 minutes worth of video to probably and hopefully less than one minute. But in essence, what I'm doing here is the same thing you've seen me do in uh, earlier segments of this video, which is cut the cable, strip the cable, crimp the cable, and then put an adhesive uh, heat shrink on it to protect it from the elements. Um, this is the engine side. And I did do with this what I did with the other sides, which is double crimp it, which you can see right there, just to make sure I have a really good contact on this. All right, so that's it. We've got this wired in. Um, Joey's going to go ahead and put the switch on one. I'm going to make sure nothing sparks or smokes. Go ahead. And if everything's wired up correctly, we should. All right, so we're, we've got a good start here. Um, everything's wired up as far as power. I actually wanted to do the rigging, but the control cables I got were 14 foot and they will work, but man, it is pushing it. So I've ordered some 16 foot cables. So if you're running a 17 foot Montauk, 16 foot cable is the way to go. You're gonna have uh, room to spare, which is fine because we can, we can put up the slack inside the uh, the helm. But anyway, this is done. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit share and like, and um, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.